Hi, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, the Art Sherpa, and I adore teaching acrylic painting to beginning artists. Today, I want to show you how, even if you're really new to painting, you can paint this fantastic, whimsical wildflower scene. It's really simple. It's really easy. I'm sure you can do it. So get your paint, get your brushes, get some Q-tips. Come back and meet me at the easel right now. We're going to art together. So let's talk about the materials we're going to use real fast. I have a 9 by 12 canvas board here, but listen, you could use any size canvas or board or acrylic paper that you wanted to use. Over here I have acrylic paint. I have green, blue, titanium white, magenta, believe it or not this dark color is purple, yellow, a little palette knife to mix. We have Q-tips in bundles of three tied together kind of in a triangle. Listen, if you want to know the exact colors and materials, Check the description below and all that information will be there. Let's get going. So I like to make a turquoise and to make my turquoise, I'm gonna take my blue and my green paint and I'm going to mix them together one to one. You could mix these with your brush or a palette knife like I'm doing here. Just pull out a little bit, one to one. So one part green, one part blue. That's all I'm probably going to need for this. And I'm mixing it with my palette knife because it lets me mix it thoroughly instead of loosely like I might with my brush. All right, so I'm going to take this number eight cat's tongue and I'm going to get it a little bit wet and drag off the extra water. Load both sides of my brush with a touch of the blue and come over to my white making a very light color. This is my lightest color. In the upper, if you imagine that your canvas is divided into fours, in the upper left, I'm going to make a sketch, a little kind of, this could be a moon, this could be a sun. In my mind, it's a sun. I'm going to make round brush strokes. This is a very light color. And as I get that centered, I will just Continue making round brush strokes away from it. Now, as I'm going, I can get a little more blue. So that this color is a shade to two shades darker than my first one. You can see that here. And I'm going to very lightly, light brush pressure in circular brush strokes and I'm blending these two edges together, right? Making the sky as I'm going out. Let me get a little water on my brush. That helps improve the flow of the paint. I'm going to come back and show you a trick to make this space look better in a minute. So don't panic right now that you have a hard edge. Because I'm going to show you how we're going to soften it as we go. Right now I'm just wanting to make all these circular brush strokes. I'm dipping in my water to improve the flow of my paint. But only a little bit because if I get a really wet brush, it's going to make my acrylic not work very well. And if I were using student paint, or economy paint, I might not use any water. All right, get a little more paint. Going darker as I go out. See how this is darker? And I'm blending this area where it's still wet into the area in front of it. And that's what gives you a soft blend in acrylic paint. That's how you get that. I might even come and make sure this nice corner has a rounded dark value. There we go. Just blend that sky all the way to the edge now, ever getting darker. They dipped in, add water, add paint, keep going, you've got this. The big thing if you've never painted before, just to realize everything's gonna be okay. 
I'm turning my canvas to help me get a good angle. Sometimes you turn your canvas to help you get a better angle on something. That's okay. Don't turn yourself, turn the canvas. Don't make your body position uncomfortable or yourself uncomfortable. Go ahead and rotate the canvas as you need. A lot of this will be covered by grass. But it's still important to take the paint, I'm gonna put my canvas back, to the edge so that the painting looks complete. Ah, just a nice deep breath. It's pretty fun. Doesn't take a lot. Now, without rinsing this brush, you can see I have a lot of pigment on here. I'm gonna go right into my white. I'm gonna come to this edge. And you can see I'm, this pressure is very soft. I'm not pushing down hard on the brush. I haven't gotten water, so the brush is sort of dry. And I'm making little radiating highlights coming out, see, softening them. Get a little more white, don't rinse. Just curl, curve the brush stroke around. Is that nice? And if I want right here in the center, come get a little more white. But it's not completely white because there's pigment on my brush. I can make this neat and tidy. See that? A little form definition. Brush stroke these out. Pretty and easy. You do that until you're totally, <laughs> my glasses are touching, until you're totally happy. So now I'm going to dry the canvas. That way the grass goes on nicely and I get a really good result. Real things before you start painting the grass, I want to show you some things to help you paint grass better today on this painting. So first, I'm going to get my number four cat's tongue, and I'm going to get this wet, and I'm going to get some just green on it. That's the color of grass, basically. <laughs> it's green. Of course, it's many more colors, and I just want to show you that when you're painting the grass, there's an inclination to want to make slow, considered strokes that look like a hedge. See how this is all the same length? When we're doing our grass, I want you to be much lighter on your brush, very little pressure. You don't want to press hard like this. You want to be on the edge and to flick. Flick, 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 flick. When you come around and change the curve when you flick. So I'm curving to the right. I'm curving to the left. My pressure is the heaviest at the beginning of the stroke and flicks off. Flick, flick. Take a couple seconds and practice flicking your brush so you can see how your brush does its best grass stroke. All right, let's paint the grass in. Okay, now that you practice and you're totally ready, let's plant some beautiful lush grass. All right, so the color that I'm gonna wanna do is very interesting. I've got my number four here. I'm gonna pull out my green, but I like to add a little of my yellow to it. And I'm gonna loosely mix this. And what I mean is I'm not gonna mix them thoroughly together. I'm gonna let it be streaky and clumpy on my brush. I'm gonna come over here and my grass is gonna be shorter over here and get longer to the right. And I'm gonna do what we talked about, which is to flick my brush stroke. Flick, flick. Just go. Sometimes I'm curving to the right, and sometimes I might come and curve to the left. 
I'll come get a little more of my green on my brush so some of these strokes are darker and some are lighter. We're just trying to create grass. Curving to the right, flick, 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 flick. Lots of brushes will do this stroke. It's about getting to know your brush and practicing how to make it do what you're asking it to do. I'm still loosely mixing and loading on both sides. You can see how this is loaded on. I'm gonna come put in some of my longer grass over here. And these strokes will be bolder and longer. And you can see I use more of my body to flick them up. Dip, let's get a little more of this green and some yellow on there, loosely mixed. Here's a little trick. A titch of white can do some interesting things too. See what that did? Long flicks going up. Each blade of grass is a slightly different length. I'm letting the paint mix on the canvas for me. Look at that lovely clump of grass. You can do that. Picked up all that nice paint right there. Go ahead and just pull this up. A little more yellow, a little more green, loosely mixed. It's always like a bit of a magic discovery to see how my grass is going to grow when I do this. A little green, a little yellow, maybe a smidge of white. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Making sure some are longer and some are shorter the way grass likes to be. I'm gonna rinse out my brush. I'm gonna grab some just green. I'm gonna make sure that I've got just a little bit of this deeper color here. See how I'm doing at the base. My flick doesn't really go away. I do try to follow the direction of the grass that I've already painted in. All right. And it can be nice to come and get just a little white and a little green. Add just a hint of a layer, not too much guys, just a little bit. You just want a little dimension. You wanna look at your project and see, do you like your grass? Do you like how it's grown? You can put as many layers of grass in as you like. When you have your grass exactly as you like it, it's good to let it dry. I'm gonna dry mine with a hairdryer. I'm gonna do that on low heat, about six inches from the canvas to maybe limit my color shift. All right, let's do that. Once my canvas is dry, I can go ahead and put my colors on. The reason I like it to be dry is there's a lot of yellow in my green, and that can make my purple and pink go to colors I'm not gonna be as happy with. And I want my wildflowers to be bright and cheerful. Let's start putting those in, because that is the really fun part. So over here, I have several bunches of three Q-tips already rubber banded together in little triangles. For this particular wildflower, that's the best shape. I have my magenta and my purple and my white. And I'm going to load first with a little of my pink. You can see that. But then a little of my purple, but it doesn't cover the whole thing. And then a little white. See how that's all mixed up? Let's come right here, and I'm going to show you how you can tap out a really charming wildflower. When you tap out these flowers, you're gonna see that the paint does this beautiful mixture right off of the Q-tip, off of the cotton bud onto the canvas. Now, I will sometimes rock to taper my flower so that kind of comes to a point. See how that nice that is? That's really lovely there. Next time I dip in though, I might go more pink, not get any purple, get a lot more white. 
so that his little flower friend over here is a slightly different color. And it can be nice to put some light taps that don't have as much paint. Now, maybe this one has more purple and some white. See how that is? It can be hard sometimes to get the white on there like you want. Let's put a little dark purple cluster right there. Back to the pink. Rotate and get some white. Sometimes, depending on the earbud that you use, these can get a lot of hairs. And one thing that you can do is to make several bunches so that if it gets hairy, you can just change it out. I just went pink and white again. Let's put some happy little wildflowers that are low. Isn't that gorgeous? Keep going. You've got to grow all the flowers in this field. Make it just how you would want it to be in a perfect, happy dream. More purple. See how it's just like a little marble? It's so pretty. A little tapered up. Back to my pink. Maybe I'll come over here. Sometimes it's nice to space out when you're growing flowers because if you just go sequentially, it can get too orderly. And it's nice to give some room to think creatively. See, that gave me some nice spacing. So I might space over here. Let's get some purple. Let's get some white. And say, all right, there's a little cluster. Right there, that's a pretty cluster. This time I'm gonna do something crazy. I'm gonna get just just white. Come over right here. Just tapping. I'm letting the shape of the Q-tips help me make these flowers. Pink, white. You can also always check your tap right there on your palette. I'm imagining little clusters, some close, some far. I like to put some down into the flowers so that my field of flowers feels full. And guess what? You have just painted a gorgeous scene of wildflowers with some simple brush strokes and a few new techniques. I hope you are so proud of your painting. If you are, I'd love to see it. Definitely share it with me. Let me know what you thought of this and what you might like to paint with Q-tips in the future because you know I love doing this. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and just keep making art. I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.